quinacridone burnt orange pigment in the mix. I'll go round. So I've got my A2 mixed media paper and I'm just picking up some cerulean blue with uh, my round mop brush. This is a synthetic brush. And we'll put a very simple wash in for the sky. The paper's up uh, at an angle which is near vertical. So I can use gravity to help me out here and there. And, you know, the wash forms a little bead along its lower edge. So I can use that as a sort of reservoir of paint and kind of control the flow of the paint a little bit. But, you know, if it starts to run into my drawing, which has been made, you know, in a very simple fashion, as you can see, with um, a unipin marker then it's not it's not too big a deal now there are some distant hills there um, which i'm not going to worry about too much in detail but i am going to indicate their presence so what i'm going to do is uh, i've got some carbazole violet here And I just want to hint at the presence of those distant hills. So I'm just going to create a sort of jagged outline off in the distance by rolling the brush and I think that's really all I need for now. So next up is my uh, quinacridone burnt orange and actually my original intention was to use this as the highlight color but actually I'm, I'm not going to do that I'm going to leave the highlights pure white for the moment so let's get a bit more pigment in the mix a little bit more water okay and then we'll start to add some color to these buildings so the first thing I'm going to do come straight down this front wall and in fact I now realize I could start a little higher Now I used vertical brush strokes there. Got a bit of dry brush. I'm quite happy for that. So I'm going to use horizontal here. And again, the dry brush I'm quite happy for. Add some texture to the surface of the building. And that's going to kind of peter out as I go down to the bottom. I'm going to let that happen because I intend to come in and put some trees over the top of that in a little bit. Now, just to change things up a little bit, I'm going to add a bit more pigment to my wash and go straight across there for the bridge, up and down in one clean sweep, across, reload the brush, across again, across again, and then for the archways, I'll go round and round. I think I'm going to leave that like that. Now, um, the foreground and this wall here, I want to make a little bit darker and then off through the archways we can see some more darkness as well so we 
going to grab some more of our orange. Now I don't need to be too fussy about what is going on back there, but just copy the big shapes. Could almost do with making that darker, so let's grab a bit more pigment. There's a dark shadow there. And it's a bush here, I think, but we're going to make it dark as well. And there's a bit of a wall or something. And that will do for now. Going back in with what I've got left on the palette and we'll sweep around there. And across there. Just realized I've missed a, a little one of the walls, one of the front facing walls of a building. So I'm just going to come back in here. Fill that in. And we could also do with adding a little bit of the same color. On the ends of these chimneys or end pieces of the building, whichever they are. And then while well, I've got that on the go, slightly darker. We can add a few shadows without being too fussy about it. And a few hints at little details in the architecture. come back in with our violet. So I'm going to go a little stronger now than I did for the very distant background. Colour in that roof. This one as well. Go over the top of the orange for this roof here. Let's do that again. Well, no, we won't do it again. We're going to leave it. We're going to leave it. We're not going to be tempted. Um, now, in terms of windows, I can begin to indicate some of those. But again, without being too fussy about it. So we've got one, two, Third one's a bit bigger, and then a fourth one. And then down below, we've got a taller wi window, which is split into three bits. And the central part of that one is quite a bit darker, so I've just picked up a little more violet just to make that one a touch darker. And staying with that darker theme, I've kind of, you know, skipped out a row of windows here, or I'm about to, but I'm going to just put another one in there. The beginnings of one there. Okay, and then down on grabbing almost pure violet now. A little bit there as well. Okay. Now we can use some of that same colour for some of the windows that we've got here. And So one, two, 
three, four, five, six. Again, I'm not copying this exactly, I'm just trying to make it reasonably convincing. <clears throat> um, staying with the dark purple, we can put in a few shadows. Go even darker than I did here on top of the the orange, and with a bit of luck, we'll get some interesting patterning within the watercolor there. Then we'll hint at a few branches peeking through the foliage that I'm going to put in in a little bit. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, just with a fairly clean brush, I'm going to really wet the surface of the paper here. And then I'm going to leave an area which is less wet and then down below, well, I say less wet, dry, I'm going to, but I'm going to wet the bottom of the paper as well. OK, and then with that same mop brush, I'm going to take some of the, the purple and I'm going to sweep it through that area. And you see how it's beaded along the edge of the the dry part that I put down and then we're going to come down to the lower part that I created or the lower wet part that I created rather and then what I'm about to do is grab some more of the orange I used earlier. Come back in with my flat brush and with pure, pretty much pure pigment. I mean, it's a wet brush, but what I'm going to do is drag that vertically down. Grab some more. Then leave a little gap. Make things a little more random here. And then I'm going to grab another flat brush, but one that I haven't used yet, so completely dry. Put that into the violet. And it's slightly frayed, this brush as well, which is what I want. And use that to suggest the part of the, the weir that we've got here. And I'll take some of those marks into the wet area and also into the reflections as well. Now, having got that on the brush, we'll come down here and just put a couple of dark patches in the water as well. But again, we don't have to be too, too descriptive about it. Next, I've got some undersea green. 
grabbing my oval round brush I'll pick up some of that fair amount of water on there and then what I'm going to do is just pick up along the edge some of that um, violet and then along the opposite edge some of the orange and then my hope is if I roll this across the paper here it's always a bit of a gamble but we're starting to get some random effects Getting a little more of the green on the brush now as I come down a little bit lower. And then I need to, this is a, this is a rarity for me. I need to actually go right handed, I think here. So let's do that. I've got a bit more green and purple on the brush. And then I'm going to grab the same brush, going to grab uh, quite a bit of the green, some of the violet, mix the two together. And we can imagine that some of that uh, foliage is reflected in the water down here. So I'm just going to put in some of that. 